Good afternoon and welcome to Crippling HTTPS with Unholy Pack. You are in Mandalay EF and our speakers today are Isaac Kotler and Amit Klein. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, notes here. We need to um, stop by the business hall located in Bayside AB during the day and for the welcome reception tonight from 1730 to 1900. Also, uh, the Black Hat Arsenal is on the Palm Foyer, Level 3. Finally, the Pawnee Awards are this evening and they are in Mandalay Bay BCD at 1830. We also appreciate everybody making sure that their phones are on uh, vibrate. We don't need to hear your cool ringtones. And finally, there are uh, microphones in the audience. So when Q&A time comes, please uh, go to the microphone to ask your questions since these are being recorded. And with that, gentlemen, it is yours. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so, and um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to this uh, Black Hat talk about uh, crippling HTTPS with unholy pack. Uh, with us today is Itzi Kotler, who is the CTO and co-founder of SafeBridge, and uh, myself, Amit Klein, the VP Security Research for SafeBridge as well. Before we actually begin, I would like to uh, give us a, a little teaser here. And, uh, describe a situation wherein you're in a potentially malicious network. It could be a free Wi-Fi, it could be uh, any guest network you plug in your computer to, or maybe your own corporate LAN through uh, being uh, compromised by uh, uh, an, uh, an infected uh, endpoint. So uh, obviously you are a security conscious researcher, and thus you restrict yourself to uh, HTTPS, uh, browsing to HSTS sites. Uh, I remind you that uh, google.com uh, just uh, enabled HSTS on their sites uh, last week. Uh, or, and or using uh, any false TLS or SSL plugin uh, in, your, uh, uh, in your browser. Uh, so uh, theoretically, since all your traffic is encrypted from the first byte, you should be secure. But are you indeed? So the rest of the presentation will go off, uh, along the following lines. We'll first uh, discuss the uh, PAC and WPAD. Uh, then we will explain how we can steal HTTPS URLs over the LAN or wireless LAN and why this is uh, uh, scary. Uh, then we'll describe uh, another concept, a related concept called PAC malware. And we'll explain the capabilities uh, of the PAC malware and, uh, the C and, and describe the CNC protocol. Um, we'll also show uh, a pack feature matrix uh, wherein we'll uh, correlate uh, browser, the virus browsers versus the uh, pack features. And we'll uh, conclude with ideas for remediation and fix. So, pack refresher. A pack is an acronym for proxy autoconfig. It's a file that designates uh, for the browser which proxy to use. Uh, for each and every URL that the browser is about to navigate to. It's a JavaScript base, so the logic is JavaScript. And the API between the browser and, and pack is the find proxy for URL function with two arguments that the pack needs to implement. Uh, and the browser needs to invoke per each URL. This is a textbook example for a pack file. For, it's a very simple one. As you can see, it implements find proxy for URL. Uh, the browser needs to invoke this function with a URL and just the host part for the second argument. And what this function does in this case is uh, do a regular expression match uh, between the host and example.com. And if the, the match succeeds, it returns direct, which tells the browser not to go through a proxy. However, if uh, the uh, regular expression does not match, uh, the proxy, the, the pack, the, the pack function, the, the find proxy for URL, returns a series of proxies to be used uh, in, the, uh, in, in the format of proxy, proxy name, uh, or, or IP uh, column port, semicolon separates those entries from each other, and the, the logic is that the browser needs to fall back from the first one to the second one to, until the last one, uh, and direct tells the, the browser to use a direct connection, i.e. not through a proxy. Um, what is available to the JavaScript 
uh, code in the pack in the pack context in the execution while, while the browser executes the pack logic. Uh, it has no window object and it has no document object. So all the DOM functions you are so uh, used to and love uh, in, from for example, in uh, cross-site scripting payloads and HTML uh, games and and attacks are not there. For example, no XML HTTP request, no loading of additional code via script injection, no hitting external resources via IMG injection, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. All these simply are not there. What is there, apart from the uh, built-in functions and objects like math and like eval, uh, are a set of about a dozen functions that are specific to Park uh, and are and. And uh, we group them into uh, a binary function like DNS domain is, is in net, and so forth, not too helpful. Weekday range and date range and time range that help the uh, coder to uh, do some uh, date and time based uh, logic. And shell expression match, uh, the general uh, regular expression uh, engine. DNS resolve and is resolvable, which are more interesting uh, in our context, and they can uh, do uh, the, their uh, um, the logic is self-explanatory. Can either resolve into IP address or just tell us if uh, if a hostname is resolvable. My IP address is simply the IP address for the current machine. And alert, which is a non-standard implementation in in a browser, uh, may display uh, some message as a pop-up. And where does the browser obtain the pack file from? It can, the browser has, by configuration, two options to uh, retrieve a, fi a pack file. One is a manual uh, pack file configuration, in which case the browser, we, one has to tell the browser the URL for the pack file. And the other one is the more automatic uh, way of, or fashion of obtaining a pack through a, another protocol called Web Proxy Auto Discovery or WPAD. At the right hand side of the screen, you can see a screenshot uh, from Windows uh, system con uh, configuration, um, which uh, in, wherein I, uh, the checkbox for using WPAD, which is called in, in the Windows jargon automatically detect setting, uh, is marked. In this case, it is not. In this case, it is not checked. So uh, in the machine here uh, does, is not configured to use WPAD. But if you check this box, the machine uh, will use WPAD. And so we need to dis to discuss WPAD. So as as we said earlier, it requires a specific checkbox checked in the browser. Uh, it is in fact quite common in enterprises. And in Windows at large, it is the default, at least for Windows 10, we checked that, probably for uh, earlier operating systems as well. And the way WPAD semi-standard works is that it provides the, the operating system or the browser with a set of uh, fallbacks to find the pack, uh, to, to, to find the pack or set fallback options to file the pack. The first priority is using DHCP. It works only for IPv4 networks. And the idea here is that uh, after, during DHCP um, uh, handshake, the DHCP server provides DHCP uh, data, such, which is called options to the, to the client. And one of those options, option 252 to be specific, uh, designates the pack URL that the DHCP wants the client to use. If no DHCP handshake and uh, DHCP exchange took place or no option 252 is present in the DHCP options part, uh, the browser and operating system fall back to the second option which is using DNS and in which case the browser and operating system issue uh, a DNS query for WPAD.domain, where domain is the present domain that the browser or that the operating system is configured to use. Um, if this uh, hostname is resolved into an IP address, the browser with an operating system will then uh, issue a request, an HTTP request to the said uh, IP with the resource requ uh, requested slash WPAD.dat. This is a hardwired uh, string. And whatever comes out from this request will be the pack file. This scheme, this WPAD, is supported by Windows and Mac. Uh, we've seen it working well with Edge and uh, Internet Explorer and Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. WPAD is not supported by iPhone and Android. So now that we laid the background for the first concept, we move to describe this in part one and the concept of HTTPS subversion with malicious pack. And the main idea goes as following. Uh, we first 
the first thing, the context is the scenario in which a malicious actor in your public Wi-Fi or your, or your corporate LAN uh, has, has access, the malicious actor is, re resides on, 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 on the LAN, it has access to the LAN. What this uh, malicious actor needs to do is to force the browser to use a malicious pack. And how would the mal malicious actor go on doing that? Uh, if your uh, operating system uh, engages, once you plug in your laptop to this LAN, your operating system starts a DHCP uh, negotiation to get DHCP parameters, the, uh, the malicious actor needs to spoof or hijack this DHCP traffic and provide uh, its own DHCP response containing an op option 252 uh, pointing at the malicious URL for PAC. If your uh, operating system um, reverts to using DNS, then again, the malicious actor needs to spoof or hijack this, uh, the DNS traffic and provide uh, the, an attacker IP for WPAD queries. The browser then requests the pack from the attacker's IP or URL, and now the browser has the malicious pack. The browser exposes the HTTPS URLs to the pack, to the, to the function find proxy for URL. Uh, it's important to stress that this is not an attack against TLS or SSL. This, the URL is intercepted before it is uh, serialized as HTTP and encrypted in TLS or SSL. So TLS or SSL versions or features or configuration are simply not relevant and will not help to mitigate this attack. So once the uh, malicious pack logic obtains the, uh, the URL, the HTTPS URL, the final step is to exfiltrate this URL to, the, to an attacker server. Because right now, the pack, the pack file is running in the context of, uh, of the victim browser. It's still on the victim operating system. We need to exfiltrate the URL to the attacker machine. And the attacker does that by employing DNS resolve or is resolvable. And that these functions actually go and do DNS resolution, and so they can touch outside uh, uh, external servers. Uh, the attacker simply do the attacker can do that by chopping the URL into small chunks that can fit in a DNS query and appending an attacker-owned domain like attacker.com to the hostname and then, uh, then invoking, say, DNS resolve. Uh, this will cause uh, the DNS query to arrive eventually at the, uh, at the authoritative name server for attacker.com, which can be the attacker's uh, DNS server. And the attacker DNS server needs to uh, collect all those queries and deserialize them, uh, sorry, and serialize them back and deserialize them into the single uh, uh, URL, and thus the attacker obtains the uh, exfiltrated URL. Here's a, 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 an outline of how a malicious pack uh, may look like. Uh, you can see at the bottom right part of the screen the function find proxy for URL that the browser invokes. Uh, to clarify, uh, we, we uh, um, split the uh, exfiltration and the actual functionality. So first the function the find proxy for URL invokes exfil send with the URL and that exfil send as the, main, as the name hints, takes care of the exfiltration, and it returns a direct string uh, telling the browser to use a direct connection. And the exfil send is the workhorse here. Uh, without going into details, what it does is hex encoding each and every byte of the data, the URL in our case, um, chopping it to s slices that can fit a DNS query, adding uh, adding the, uh, um, the attacker domain at the end and the invoking DNS resolve. Interestingly enough, it, if you look at the first line of the um, right hand side uh, screenshot, you see that DNS resolve, which is used to exfiltrate, and interestingly enough, you, see, you will see us uh, adding an empty string to it, and we'll touch that later. There's a lot of uh, machinery here that needs to be uh, implemented in order for the protocol to be uh, resilient and to be uh, uh, um, fully uh, operational with uh, long URLs and URLs that contains various characters and so forth. Uh, we will have the full implementation uh, in our uh, Git uh, repository which, whose URL we'll provide in a later slide. Now that we have HTTPS URLs, what can we do with them? So, HTTPS URLs are very interesting. 
They, con they may contain uh, very sensitive information. Think about uh, uh, services that are used to uh, share uh, files or resources between users. The way, the, the way a first user shares a file or resource with a second user typically involves uh, having the service either automatically or manually uh, send an email to the user, to the second user that, we, uh, that the first user wants to share the, the resource with. And that email contains a single URL that once clicked allows the second user access to the resource with privileges assigned by the first user. Um, now let's say that the second user has this uh, uh, malicious pack loaded to the browser and the, it, and the URLs exfiltrated to the attacker. The attacker now obtains those URLs and can uh, put them or can navigate to them with, in a, with a browser and obtain the same resource, the same file with the same privileges as the second, uh, as the second entity. Uh, OpenID is another very interesting case because OpenID in the last phase of authentication redirects the user's browser from the authenticator site to the service site, and it does so by providing a URL redirection to the uh, service site, to the site that, that needs the authentication, uh, with some token parameters, the, to the query parameters, that tells the service site that the user is indeed authenticated and is uh, allowed to use the site. Uh, again, Pack, malicious pack file in the uh, user users browsers can users browser can exfiltrate this URL to the attacker and the attacker can write the same session with the user with the same set of privileges. Uh, password reset is of course another lovely example wherein the URL can be uh, can be stolen from from the user and the attacker can not only access the the the, the, uh, the account the attacker can also lock out the the uh, genuine user by choosing the attacker's password before the user manages to to click the URL and so um, it's even more powerful in such cases. Uh, also keep in mind the uh, this scenario where uh, URLs can have a username and password as part of the URL before the hostname, like uh, the HTTPS colon slash slash username colon password at hostname. This is uh, applicable to HTTP and HTTPS as, as well as for FTP, although we need to note that for FTP and HTTP, not HTTPS, uh, this, this kind of credential theft is an optimization because the pack, um, the, the malicious pack file can simply direct all traffic to the attacker's uh, proxy uh, server, in which case plain text traffic like HTTP and FTP already contains those, already contain those uh, credentials and thus the attacker can obtain those credentials even without uh, URL exfiltration. However, this is a very uh, inefficient way of doing so by, because passing all traffic through a, through a proxy is uh, is uh, CPU consuming, network consuming, and may flag, a, flag the attacker's activity uh, to any uh, uh, anomaly detect detection uh, logic that exists on the network. Um, we need to know that uh, the, the concept of a malicious WPAD pointing at a malicious SPAC was discussed by uh, the uh, respectable researchers from uh, NetResec and Positive Security earlier. Uh, however, they, they do, what they, uh, what they uh, describe is just routing the whole traffic to, to a, to a, through a malicious proxy, which provides access to HTTP uh, uh, traffic and, and FTP traffic, perhaps, but not to HTTPS traffic, because HTTPS traffic is encrypted before it arrives at the proxy. Uh, there were some uh, mentions of this uh, of this concept of a uh, uh, URL uh, URL exfiltration through a malicious pack. Uh, by uh, it was very briefly mentioned in an answer by uh, Leonid Evdokimov in Stack Exchange, uh, which, which was uh, published during our own research to the matter. Uh, it was described very briefly in an MSC thesis that was published in May third after our, uh, our own um, submission to, uh, to Black Hat by uh, Nikolas Golbovich, uh, as well as uh, a blog by Maxim Andreev uh, about this concept back in June, again, while we were researching this topic. Uh, unfortunately, this blog was in Russian, so we couldn't really find it. Uh, by the way, Maxim presents in parallel to us, uh, so good luck to Maxim on this in his presentation. Um, 
All those um, prior art uh, uh, cases uh, did not really uh, expand too much on this uh, concept. Uh, we did, we provide full weaponization of this concept, including supporting long URLs, multiple messages, and multiple clients. We uh, describe a two-way protocol from the uh, pack, uh, from the malicious pack to an attacker web, so an attacker, an attacker server. We provide open source and free code that implements all what we talk about. Uh, we also discuss uh, a related additional concept called pack malware. Uh, we provide a pack feature matrix, uh, and we, prov we provide all this in English. So let's see the ingredients that the attacker needs in order to implement this attack. So in order, to, the attacker needs some way of spoofing the HTTP responses and or DNS responses. The attacker then needs to provide a web server to serve the malicious pack. And then the attacker also needs it, the attacker's own uh, domain uh, controlled with uh, an authoritative DNS server uh, as a command and control server. Uh, we, the most important piece in this, uh, in this scheme is the uplink or the exfiltration protocol. Uh, the DNS and the, the attacker, so, so first, let's see some uh, basic concepts. Uh, for DNS suffix, uh, we, the, the attacker needs a DNS suffix that is owned by the attacker. We call it suffix. Uh, each browser needs to have its own unique ID, so we can uh, split traffic between browsers. Uh, we call it client ID. We, the, this unique ID can be random, and indeed this is how we implement it. And then each message within a browser needs to have a unique ID that can be incremental, which we call message ID. Having this, the definition of the protocol is as following. We first, first we hex encode uh, the string that we need to exfiltrate. And this is not so sufficient. Uh, obviously, we can use other schemes to uh, encode it in a more sufficient manner, but we leave that for, for additional uh, uh, research. Then we break the uh, message into fragments up to 63 characters because DNS labels are limited to 63 characters. Then every three or four fragments uh, will fill a DNS query, but we need to keep the total length uh, less than 253, which is the DNS limit for, for a host name. This forms a chunk, and we assign the chunk with a chunk ID number, and then we exfilter the chunk via DNS query. So the format, as you can see, is as following, and the last chunk is prepended by X to mark the end of the message. It's demo time right now, it's X, so. Okay, it's thank X. you very much, Amit. Um, so we will present now a demo on how we are basically going to infect a Windows 10 machine using the uh, DHCP uh, method that Amit just described. So as Amit has explained, there's a couple different ingredients in order for us to align this attack. The first one is that we need to run a DHCP service which is going to offer the uh, opcode 252. And as you can see, as I'm highlighting right now on my screen, uh, it will basically serve uh, the Windows 10 machine with this, with this option pointing to this URL. Obviously, we need to run the DHCP service. We're going to have a very simple web service that will basically, web server, sorry, that will basically serve the malicious pack file to the machine. And we have our command control um, um, malicious pack ready for action. So um, here's a very vanilla installation of uh, Windows 10. And we have using Chrome version 51. And basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the machine to the malicious network. And I'm going to re release to renew my uh, my DHCP. As you can see, I've served the machine with the DHCP. The machine already accessed my web server and I have hit on the proxy pack file. And as you can see also, requests are starting to come in. So here's our interactive malware. There's a couple of very basic commands and we'll show them during the demo. Right now you can see that there is no URLs that have been captured. Opening this Chrome version 51, 
let's do a very basic surfing to uh, Black Hat website. Um, let's go into an HTTPS URL. As you can see, everything is, uh, is very normal. There is no change in the UI, but at the same time, going back, you can see that all these different URLs have been captured. Now, as Amit described earlier, if you are using um, single sign uh, SSO links or tokens within these URLs, let's make this, this one up. Um, basically, our malware also has a functionality to search for it. Sorry? So again, we can target and using our proof of concept malware to extract different tokens and different parameters um, which are being sent in the URLs. Amit, back to you. Thank you, Itzik. Um, so we're responsible researchers, so we need to tell you the fine print. First, the, the existing WPAD problem. Uh, if, we're coming, if we're attacking a network that serves typically uh, WPAD uh, resources already, then we need to incorporate this, uh, this, uh, the, w, the, the genuine WPAD logic in our own malicious logic. We can do that by first capturing the, 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 the genuine WPAD uh, before the attack, and then incorporating the original fine proxy for URL, maybe adding uh, something, adding a, a prefix or a suffix uh, so that it will not be uh, there, uh, it will, differentiate it for, from the fine proxy for your function that we are about to code. And in our fine proxy for URL, the last step is to return the calculation made by the original fine proxy for, the, for URL uh, to the browser. Uh, another case that we need to consider is when we force a network that does not have WPAD to, or force a browser that's connected to a network that does not have WPAD to use a WPAD. In this, in this case, Internet Explorer uh, uh, ma makes us face uh, a problem because in Internet Explorer, if, uh, uh, if it is configured to use a proxy in general, and WPAD is, is definitely such a configuration, and a site is, in, and one, one site is, or some sites are exempt from being proxied, in which, which, are, which is the case when WPAD returns a direct uh, directive, then those sites are automatically considered by Internet Explorer to be intranet, in the intranet zone, which is a problem because for, from uh, the sites that are in the intranet zone uh, have their cookies uh, container residing uh, in a different location than sites that, that are in the internet zone. So whatever the user was used to uh, in way of cookies and, and so forth will no longer work when the site is now considered in the intranet zone, so it has some user experience problems. Uh, also, in some Internet Explorer versions, there is an, a visual indicator when a site is, uh, is considered intranet zone. So we want to avoid this problem. One way of avoiding it is to just tell, that to, is to return a proxy value uh, for each and every URL <coughs> that is, that, uh, for which uh, find proxy for URL is involved. Obviously a non-optimal situation, but much better than uh, interrupting uh, or impacting the user experience. Uh, as, as mentioned earlier, the URL interception quality varies among browsers. Uh, so uh, in, Chrome and Fire, in Chrome and version up to 51 and including, uh, and in Firefox, the interception quality is good. Firefox actually didn't check 48, which was released yesterday. Uh, and in Chrome 52, which was released two weeks ago, uh, they uh, addressed the problem. Uh, in Internet Explorer and in Edge and in Safari, the URL interception quality is pretty bad. That is, the URLs are trimmed. I'll touch, about, I'll touch that uh, in a later slide. And thus are almost useless to us. Uh, HTTPS and HTTP authentication credentials, that those credentials that come before the host name of the uh, at sign, um, 
are only intercepted in Firefox, and FTP credentials are intercepted in Firefox, Intent Explorer 8, and Safari. Uh, the uplink, as we said, is limited to 100 bytes per DNS query, so this is unoptimized. We can probably squeeze almost 200 bytes if we do it right. And we, then the protocol we designed does not handle packet loss and latency issues. We can probably add some TCP-like functions to it later. It's another uh, topic for further research. As for the downlink, it, it will be described in part two, and we will just hint that we use evil, the evil function for maximum flexibility. To summarize this part of this uh, of the presentation, uh, I think what we've demonstrated is that the common belief that HTTPS traffic is secure even when used in hostile network uh, is refuted uh, with the WPAD scenario. Uh, what we've demonstrated is a way to bypass HTTPS, uh, at least for URLs, providing access to HTTPS URLs. Uh, obviously, it only works when the browser and the operating system is configured to use WPAD. Uh, it assumes that the attacker has access to the local network, and the interception quality is browser-specific. Uh, we also showed that the HTTPS URLs can carry sensitive information like credentials or access tokens, and we, we touched the topic of FTP credentials. Now we are moving to part two, the PAC malware. It's a related but somewhat different concept. And the main idea of PAC malware is that we have temporary access to the machine. It's, now, it's not a remote attack, it's a local attack. Uh, and that, that can be uh, achieved via malware running once on the machine and then deleting itself, or, by, or manually, but by someone having temporary access to the machine. Um, and it turns that in Windows, all you need to do in order to configure a machine or a browser to use a prox, to use pack, is to set a registry key, uh, a single registry key. Um, the PAC URL, unlike WPAD, is supported by uh, uh, iPhone and Android, at, at least in version 5.0 and above. Uh, interestingly enough, pa the PAC uh, URL can be designated by a file scheme, in some browsers at least, uh, and all of them, of course, support HTTP or HTTPS schemes. Uh, the file scheme can be UNC or local file. Also, with HTTP or HTTPS, that the, the resource or the, the host can be local, in which case the malware may want to install its own web server to serve the pack, or it can be a remote, uh, remote destination. Uh, unlike the remote attack, a local, uh, a local attack can also tweak the, the registry so that Internet Explorer will not uh, use unproxied, uh, will not assign unproxied uh, uh, destinations to uh, the internet zone. And more interestingly, it, it is possible to tweak the registry so that Internet Explorer will report each URL in full. And we mentioned earlier Internet Explorer uh, is, uh, trims the URL so that they are useless. Uh, but if you have access to, to uh, temporary access to the machine and you can change re this registry key, Internet Explorer will start reporting full URLs. Um, some financial mal malware, which sometimes called bankers, do install malicious packs as, as malware, but they do so in order to, to uh, route the traffic, to all traffic, to their own proxy servers. And as we said earlier, uh, this will provide access, this, this will grant access to the attacker to HTTP traffic, but not to HTTPS traffic. So what are the PAC malware capabilities? Like I said, PAC can be installed as local file or UNC file, or if we're talking about HTTP or HTTPS, either look on a local machine, but then you also have to uh, install a web server, or on a remote URL. Uh, it, it is capable of intercepting URLs, we can establish a two-way link, uplink and downlink, over DNS queries. Uh, we can use the alert messages with, uh, to display uh, social engineering pop-ups. This works only in Internet Explorer. We can use evil for maximum flexibility. And here's the thing. If you have a two-way uh, um, CNC protocol, you can, the browser, the, or the pack logic actually, can request data from the CNC server. Now, in order to provide maximum flexibility, the pack file can download data from the CNC server and then invoke eval on this data so that this data actually is intercepted, inter, uh, 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 
inter interpreted sorry, as code. And this provides maximum flexibility so that one day you, the, the pack model can do this and an hour later it can do that, all using uh, evil and, and flexible JavaScript code that is downloaded from the CNC server. Uh, one important feature for pack malware that is of interest is that the possibility to uh, route data to a proxy. This can be used for DDoS against the remote site. You can designate the site by IP address or by port, or, uh, to, or we can use a denial of service, or you can use it as a denial of service locally against specific sites. Uh, for example, we can route a download or update dot your antivirus here dot com to an IP address which does not return any value or any, any response, thereby effectively uh, deny, denying access from the local machine to those sites. The downloading protocol comprises of uh, three bytes out of the four returned from, uh, from a DNS query. And the, so messages can be numbered uh, and each, and when we, uh, and then the message length is obtained by resolving length.messageid.suffix, returning three bytes, designating the, length, the, the message length, and then consecutive three bytes of the uh, message can be obtained by uh, looping through them and, and requesting number.messageid.suffix. And a second demo by Itzik, please. Thank you, Amit. Um, so we're going to demonstrate right now um, some of the features that Amit has discussed about this malware capability. Uh, I'm going to attack right now the default um, Firefox that uh, is coming with uh, Ubuntu 16.0. Uh, um, the way we're going to implement this attack is I'm going to create a main middle um, to make things easier. I've configured this machine DNS to basically be the server of the, the, the pack malware. And of course, again, we're setting up a small web server to set to serve the pack file itself. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to fire up Firefox and then configure it um, to use the, um, the definition of the automatic proxy. So let's do that. Switching it from here to here. And hold up. Okay. And now we're going to surf again into a, just a regular website. That website should now be appearing in the list of captures URL. And as Amit mentioned, one of the capabilities of a pack malware is to prevent access, shut down access to different websites. We call it triggers in our pack malware. And basically what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to shut down any um, .com websites using the pack malware. And going back into our browser, uh, you can see that once I'm refreshing, Blackhead no longer working. You can see it's happening the same for HTTPS URLs. However, trying DEF CON, you can see that it's working. Amit, back to you. Thank you, Itzik. <clears throat> to summarize, uh, we've seen an unorthodox installation, pack only, it makes it a bit harder for antivirus uh, products to detect it. We've seen that pack malware is capable of, depending on the browser, HTTPS URL interception, denial of service, and distributed denial of service. And we've discussed the, the fact that we have a two-way command and control protocol via DNS with a flexible execution via eval. Now, here is a matrix describing how uh, various browsers have, uh, uh, how various browsers uh, implement uh, various pack features. Um, you can see, more or less, we've, we've touched all those uh, topics, but in the uh, top left corner, we see Internet Explorer uh, 11 and Edge, and, Internet Explorer and, and Microsoft Edge. Uh, they have files, uh, they do not have file support by default, but we can turn it on in, in registry. And find proxy for your role invocation frequency is by default trimmed, but we can set it up as the full URLs again by, again by uh, registry settings. Uh, the Safari uh, uh, items and iPhone 
for fine proxy for your invocation are uh, trimmed at this moment, but earlier this year they were providing full URLs, uh, so this is pretty fresh. Uh, note that we uh, report on Chrome 51, but uh, in Chrome 52 two weeks ago, uh, uh, the URL is again trimmed, and Firefox, uh, we, we report on 4701, but uh, we have not tested yet 48, which was released yesterday. Uh, the DNS resolve bug uh, line at the bottom is interesting. We noticed that uh, in all Internet Explorer, uh, in, in all uh, Microsoft browsers, there's an, uh, a funny bug. If you invoke DNS resolve without using the result in any calculation, it will throw an exception. This is why we needed to, uh, to add an empty string to the uh, DNS resolve result in the, uh, <coughs> in the malicious pack example. So let's discuss ideas for remediation and fix. Uh, remediation first, uh, at the user level, we suggest disabling WPAD in untrusted networks, or in general if possible. Uh, if you do need uh, to access an untrusted uh, uh, network, we propose that you use a browser that exposes as little as possible of the URL to find proxy for URL, that is, trimmed URLs. Uh, at the corporate level, we suggest avoid using WPAD, which will allow the corporate to turn off WPAD in all the browsers and machines. Server side, we suggest uh, removing uh, security related data or tokens from URLs when possible. It's not always possible, of course, but when it is, it's a good idea. Also, to move away from HTTP authentication, assuming that it is under TLS in the first place. So in general, using uh, sensitive data inside URL is, is not a good idea. As for a more robust fix, we call upon IETF to fix a WPAD uh, semi-standard, and to turn it into a standard, by the way, and force a secure pack retrieval, wherein the client identifies or, uh, or validates that the pack is, is genuine and is provided by, by the uh, genuine uh, network operator. Uh, of course, over uh, and, and using a, a transport uh, in transit security. Right now, this is not mandated. And to standardize the, the pack, uh, maybe uh, trim the URL to host only uh, or and, and or deprecate uh, DNS resolution. As for browser vendors, we propose restricting the pack functionality by trimming the URL and disabling DNS resolution. And some browser vendors indeed uh, started walking this path. To conclude, uh, what we saw here in general is that interception of HTTPS URLs uh, is, has some serious security consequences. We talked about credential theft and session hijacking and in general loss of privacy. Additionally, PAC in general can do uh, phishing by uh, invoking alert and denial of service and distributed denial of service. Specifically to the remote scenario, trusting a, a PAC retrieved in the clear from an unverified external source for handling secure, meaning HTTPS traffic, is a problematic concept. We believe that this is the root cause for the HTTPS uh, exfiltration problem. Uh, the remote scenario is also, uh, note that the remote scenario is also difficult to detect locally by antiviruses and so forth because it leaves very little uh, footprint on the machine. Uh, the PAC malware scenario is an unusual malware persistence, which, which is not necessarily uh, detected by uh, all antiviruses. Uh, still, it's a very powerful concept. It can, it can even obtain uh, more than the remote attack because we can tweak the registry to provide more information. Uh, it's now time for question and answers, but we also remind you uh, to fill the feedback form.